Coog's house. Well, well, well. Well, you look at that. Look at those big, big, big 12 standings. You are locked on Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs, the daily podcast all about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach, Parker Ainsworth. I break down all things Cougs. If you're a U of H fan or just a hater who came to stop by, please be sure to subscribe down below. That way, listen to Cougs in your news feed each and every day. Appreciate you making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. You found us on YouTube. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's so good to see you again. We are like inches away from 2,000 subscribers as I sit here and record this. So Please hit subscribe. Help us get to the 2,000 marks and do a giveaway every 250 subscribers. That one is the next big one. Once we get there, we're giving away to somebody who, something to somebody who likes and comments on the video. So hit subscribe, like, and comment the video. Let us know uh, that you're in the contest afterwards. If you don't know what to say after talking about the Big 12 on basketball and other basketball related things, tell us what your favorite Super Bowl commercial was. I'm very critical of commercials in which they pay $14 million for 30 seconds of airtime all right so today's episode is going to honestly be looking at a couple different things regarding the big 12 as we hit this interesting lull period i'll talk more about that in a second uh but when you talk about the challenge that is the big 12 uh, i want to talk some about that and then i'll talk some about the standings in that challenging big 12 as we sit here presently uh and then last but not least i do have to find some time to give some love to what's happening in Motown. More on that in a second. More on Mo, Mo, Mo on Motown in a, in a moment. But first, I want to talk some about the Big 12 and the challenge that that's presenting or not presenting. Now, um, Houston is currently 8-3 and three in Big 12 conference play. And the, this interesting, it's not a bye week, but we call it like a break. And what it is in college basketball is Every conference has their rhythm to how many times you have a conference game per week. The Big 12 was two per week for basically the whole set of conference play, except for every team has this one week somewhere in their schedule where you have a game on a Saturday and no game until the next Saturday. Otherwise, it's like you have a game on Saturday, then you have a game on Monday, two or Wednesday. They play again on the next Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But you have like typically like one during the week and one on the weekend. And everyone will have in the course of the big 12 schedule some week where they just go straight from Saturday to Saturday or Monday to Monday or whatever. Right. That's like your break. You get one week where it's like one less game than normal. And Houston sits in that right now um, with the Cincinnati game happening last Saturday and then hosting UT Austin this upcoming Saturday. Also shouts to hosting UT Austin. this upcoming Saturday. If you're on the YouTube channel, you see that my sweatshirt has the Cougs paw up, hook them horn down, uh, fun, fun times for sure. Now, Houston at 8-3 at this point. The Conference a little past the halfway point, but that's a 72.7 win percentage. That's the 13th, if that were to hold, the 13th highest conference win percentage in school history. In their first year in the Big 12, if that holds, the 13th highest conference win uh, percentage in school history. Now, admittedly, when people talked about comparing the Big 12 with American Athletic Conference, they're looking at things like last year, where Houston went 17-1 in conference play, 94.4% win percentage. Or, you know, 2018-19, they went 16-2. and That's 88.9% win percentage. Uh, 21-22, with, even with all those injuries before in the American Athletic Conference, they went... 15 and 3, that is an 83.3% win percentage. The final four year, um, 2020 21, they went 14 and 3 for an 82.4 win percentage. Uh, 2017 18, another Kelvin Sampson year in the AAC, uh, went 14 and 4 at 77.8. So I guess technically there were several AAC seasons higher. But to see this, iteration of the Houston Cougars and to see them at 
Again, 8-3, 72.7% of their conference games are wins. I think that means that we can safely say presently that the program was up for the challenge. Right? Houston and the Big 12 has come in and played on the road to Iowa State. Yes, that was a loss. They played on the road to Iowa State already. Right? They've played Texas Tech. They've played Kansas. They've played TCU, right? They've played Texas. They've played Kansas State. They've played Cincinnati. They've played Central Florida. They've played West Virginia. They've played Oklahoma State. They've played almost the entire conference already, right? And as you look up and down and look all around, other teams are not having the same success as the Houston Cougars, the legacy Long-term, hateful eight Oklahoma State Cowboys sit at two and nine in this conference. Now, I know it shows my age to think of them as the Eddie Sutton program and you know the Graham brothers of once upon a time and, and all that kind of stuff at Oklahoma State, but I I certainly feel like I heard people say that Houston was gonna have problems in this conference. And it feels like the people having problems in this conference, the people that were here, West Virginia has been here for a decade, and they're three and eight. Their season was completely turned upside down when Bob Huggins thing happened over the summer. But like, that's 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 different. And when I look at what what this tells me about Houston's team, um, I think it's interesting to say that you know, let's say, obviously, it'd be great to sit at seventy two point seven one percent of the course season. Let's say Houston loses like at Baylor, and at Oklahoma this season. Two more tough road games. Um, and just pick a home game they lose because they drop one, whatever. That would make them 12-6 and six in conference play. And that feels like a stretch because I don't know if they're going to lose a home, right? But like, let's say that happens. That would take them to 66.7% win percentage. And that would also be in the top 20 seasons in the school's history. That would also be, for what it's worth, um, 12 and six in the conference last season would have gotten you second place in the conference going to the conference tournament. Um, that, that in itself is like a tremendous record and playing very, very well in the big 12. Now let's say they go undefeated at home because we've been saying that's the goal undefeated at home and still have those two conference losses on the road. We'll say, Oh, you and Baylor cause they'll look the most difficult ones, but whatever. Right. So that would mean they finish at what does it mean they finish at um, 13 and five. Okay. A that is the record of Kansas who won the conference last year in the regular season. That also would put them at 72.2% win percentage. Uh, that would be still 13th highest in conference or in uh, school history as far as conference play goes. Uh, and then if, if they win, one of those two road games we're writing off, right? That would put them up at 77.8% win percentage, right? Uh, that would put them up there in the same echelon as like the final four year, right? As far as like conference win percentage and like where they rank in school history. Now, I don't think they were on the table. I don't think I did, the conference is difficult enough that I don't think that that's going to happen. But if that does happen, they miraculously somehow go 15 and three in conference. That's suddenly like one of the 10 best seasons for Houston in any conference ever. Right. And they're doing it in their first year in the Big 12. Now, I don't think that that last version of this is going to happen, but it does tell me that uh, honestly, Sampson, Houston, this program. Uh, frankly, I should pause. Samson would tell me to stop getting ahead of myself. UT Austin comes to town this Saturday. UT Austin is a made challenging game. UT Austin gave you a big punch in their house. You had to go to overtime, blah, 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 right? Samson is the coach. I talk to you every day about the Cougs, and we don't have a game this first half this week to talk about. And I look at this and see, okay, there's a real shot here for some history making down the road. So you and I can talk about it even if they won't. But I also think it sets up that this program is built to become the legacy program, potentially in the Big 12, certainly in the state of Texas, and one of the most basketball-rich areas and regions in the world. 
It's primed to do it. It's ready to take over. The SEC basketball has got nothing on this. Big 12 basketball is the place to be. Houston is in it and wrecking it. The state of Texas produces a ton of NBA talent, a ton of top-end college talent, and Houston is ready to take over that state. It's already got the most Final Fours of any program in the state. It's ready to continue to take the next steps. Now, I want to look at how this year's Big 12 Conference is shaking out and what the rankings and standings and stuff like that are after a weird Monday night, to the least. But first... Let's let's say you maybe had your own weird weekend and you're looking to get back on top and looking to find some place to do it. FanDuel, Super Bowl's over. Place move into and find some buckets right now because right now new customers get $150 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your $5 bet wins. They have all kinds of NBA bets. You can bet all kinds of stuff on every single Houston Rockets game, go to the Detroit Pistons and look at like Sasser and Grimes playing together again. And those kind of bets you want to. Right now, I'll also point out that they have the Houston Cougars at plus 900 to win the national championship and at plus 210 to make the final four. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and see yourself. Shoot your shot today. Fanduel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, so currently the Big 12 standings um, are interesting because they're kind of nothing like what the AP poll is. Um, The AP poll, in terms of where teams are ranked and getting votes, is Houston, after Monday, sits at third. Kansas sits at sixth. Iowa State sits at 10th. Baylor is 12th. Oklahoma is 25th. I'm sorry, BYU is 19th. Oklahoma is 25th. Texas Tech, TCU, and Texas all receive votes. That's nine of the 14 teams getting AP top 25 votes. Nine out of 14. That's a lot. That's a lot. Now, that's also worth pointing out that there are uh, eight teams from Ken, in the top 25 in Ken Palm. Ten of, mo- ten of them are in the top 40 in Ken Palm. Uh, five teams in the top 25 of the net. Uh, 11 are in the top 40 in the net. I'm uh, sorry, 6 in the top 25, 11 in the top 40 in the net. All of these analytical rankings, too, also have a lot of stock in how the Big 12 plays out. And a lot of investment, I should say, in like watching how the Big 12 plays out. Interesting enough, though, in conference itself, like in conference rankings, Houston is the top of that as well, right? Number three, Houston is top of all the other polls, and they're sitting at the top of the Big 12 as it currently stands at 8-3 and three in conference, a half game ahead of the Iowa State Cyclones, who sit at 10th in the AP poll. Sit further behind a couple other schools and things like Ken Palm and Net, but Iowa State sits at 7-3, and three, a half game behind Houston. Now, depending on what day of the week you listen to this, this may actually be different by the time... Uh, you hear it because on Tuesday night they travel Cincinnati. They may either be eight and three and tied with Houston, ultimately actually have that tiebreaker because that game in Ames a couple weeks ago, or they could fall to seven and four because Cincinnati does a solid and Houston's a full game ahead of them. Um, we'll see by the time Wednesday morning happens. Either way, the interesting thing here is not necessarily that Iowa State, a top 10 team, is at second, could be tied for first very soon um, in Big 12 standings. But that Texas Tech, who received AP poll votes but did not get ranked, um, sits at third in the conference at seven and four, a full game behind Houston. Now Houston did, for what it's worth, beat them, handed them that full game. So I think that's worth like looking at at least, right? But digress a little bit and say that I think that. Texas Tech's brilliance is really more seen in some of the more analytical models as far as strength of scheduling goes. Um, Texas Tech's a tough matchup for a lot of teams. Houston managed to beat them in Houston, but other teams have found, as Kansas did Monday night, they're a much more challenging team to play in Lubbock, obviously. Um, I also think it's worth pointing out and I just I see the way that these things shake out, and 
I, I anyway, I feel like I'm spending too much time with Texas Tech. I do think it's interesting to point out that Texas Tech sits at third place in the conference after knocking off Kansas in Lubbock by nearly 30 points Monday night. And I know Kansas down a couple starters and what this and that thing. And frankly, I wasn't necessarily surprised that Tech won. It was how they won in that one and claiming that. Baylor sits at fourth in the conference, currently at six and four in conference play. Uh, Baylor sits at 12th in the AP poll, but also sits at uh, 15th in the Ken Palm rankings. And you see a bunch of, it's just interesting to see how all of those things shake out, I, I guess, to see how the balancing of this and the other thing shakes out to where Baylor ultimately lands in like a more conscious. We see the 12 next to their name, but really in conference, they're four, but really in more analytical rankings than the teens. Um, anyway, they sit at six and four, just in front of Kansas at seven and five. Kansas at seven and five is number six in the AP poll. Uh, I believe it's also six in the coaches poll. Uh, that might be, I think that's correct. And then Kansas sits at a whopping 14th in Ken Palm and is actually lower in other uh, analytical rankings. They can't seem to find ways to win on the road, which is just fascinating given how much flack Jayhawk fans uh, gave Houston fans and other you know, newcomers to the Big 12 across all of the start of the Big 12 season about how hard it was to win in the Big 12 on the road. It seems like it's really hard for Kansas, and I'll leave it at that. Um, I do think, though, that Kansas is talent. Um, Kansas is talented, and I'm not going to sit here and say they're not. Um, and, and Kansas won the conference how many bajillion times before Houston got here, right? And so I'm I'm not saying that's not a powerful program. I'm not saying that Bill Self's not a Hall of Famer. Um, and I've talked on the show before about how, you know, there's a soft spot for me, for KJ Adams, um, given my connections to his mom. Once upon a time, I do, however, see Candace as a very flawed team um, in that they rely heavily on erratic three point shooters to shoot threes to open up so much of what they do, right? Um, they hit against Houston, they did. Right. Um, and so they want, but it's harder to make those shots in the road. It's hard for role players and jump shooters. I mean, you gotta be a cold blooded jump shooter to be shooting shots and Jimmy had not shot in, in a year. Right. And so you see that that kind of wears and takes its toll on this team and they don't have a whole lot of secondary options. Um, behind them is TCU and unranked TCU. They sit squarely between Kansas and Oklahoma and BYU in this top half of the Big 12 as far as Big 12 rankings goes. Um, Wild to think that a, I say it again, a bad call for TCU in Lawrence may have shifted a whole bunch of things around this conference. It would put them ahead of TCU in the Big 12 rankings. Um, It would put them probably in the top 25, if not the top 15. Uh, It would just change dynamically or drastically the things they're doing this season, the kind of recognition they're getting for the season as they sit at six and five in the conference. Cause like Oklahoma is also six and five in the conference and had a weaker non-conference schedule by most metrics than TCU. But because we saw them like rail off a couple wins in a row, we put them at, you know, ahead of TCU uh, in the AP poll that is. Uh, they're both six and five. BYU is five and five. BYU remains a very tough place to go play. As we're seeing, the UT Austin Horns sit at five and six. Kansas State also five and six. Cincinnati four and six. Central Florida four and six. West Virginia three and eight. And that legacy hateful eight program that is Oak State sits at two and nine. Now, I understand program rebuild, so I probably should lay off of them a little bit. But across the board in this conference, you have a whole bunch of teams. I guess that, you know, at least the top 11 are consistently. And maybe we'll go 10, 10, 11, or consistently all like in the same top 10, 11, like Ken Palm and Net and the AP and the coaches would all rank one through 11 in the Big 12, maybe a little bit different order than they currently sit, but they would all be in the top 11. And I guess that's the only safe thing to say about this is that like 
No one's going to leave Kansas State out of the top 10 teams of the Big 12. No one's going to leave Texas Tech out of the top 10 teams of the Big 12. It's just where they fall within it. And as it's playing out on the basketball court, Houston continues to remain at the top. Houston continues to remain at the top of each of these different things. And as we do this little you know, pause in the week schedule, look at things in the Big 12, I feel like it's just, eh, I'm just... I'm noticing that Houston continues to be at the top of these things and that as Houston's at the top of these things, um, Houston's at the top of the metrics that indicate what's down the road to come. Um, just things to keep your eye on as you're looking at Houston in the Big 12 for the you know first year ever or whatever. Now, as we reflect back on seasons past um, and talk about those AAC days, I do want to talk about one dynamic duo Reunited once again, but first we're going to be talking something about Motown, and Motown is known for their music, but also for their cars, Motor City. And if you're trying to get your car up to peak performance, you got to go check out eBay Motors because passion, drive, and patience are what brings home the winning trophies. Also, it keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and live up to peak performance, from supercharged and roof racks to exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether in speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. Over 20, 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your parts guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. All the parts you need, the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible is only exclusive by eBay Guaranteed Fit. It's only available to you as customers all right so the story of the weekend for me in a Houston Cougar alumni kind of way I guess it really started Thursday now we hadn't talked about this yet because a spoiler we recorded Friday's episode about Cincinnati Wednesday night I'd go coach Thursday Friday Saturday Super Bowl was Sunday I admittedly didn't have anything ready for Monday hence getting the second episode out for you on Tuesday but we needed to take a moment to talk about Quentin Grimes and Marcus Sasser being reunited in Motown. Detroit Pistons now have two Houston Cougars on their roster from the final four season. That was 2020-2021. Uh, Marcus kind of represents the best of DFW and as a Red Oak kid, the Sash family is kind of a legendary basketball family in those South Dallas suburbs. Mark is representing that aspect. And then Quentin Grimes comes from North side, the woodlands just outside of Houston, both made their way to H town. Uh, and frankly, represented the university very, very well on the way to the final four. Uh, the first time the final final f- that Houston's been to the final four since the five slam of Jan era and cementing that sixth final four trip for the university. Again, the most of any uh, division one basketball program in the state of Texas. It looks like to me, and not just from a marketing perspective, but Detroit is kind of trying to play off of those same good vibes. Now, in college, Grimes and Sasser combined for 31.5 points per game, 8.3 rebounds, and 4.2 assists per game their season together. Grimes shot 40% from three on 8.3 attempts. Sasser shot 33.5% from three on eight attempts exactly per game. They both played 32 minutes a night. Uh, The other guard with them, the guard that shared the backcourt, was Ladiki Dijon Giroux. Now, I guess it, did you put his, middle, his nickname in the middle? Dijon Ladiki Giroux? Yeah. Ladiki was the uh, other guard, and he currently plays for the Memphis G League affiliate, the Memphis Hustle. Um, I should point out, I got really excited when this first happened. I thought that Kyler Edwards, who kind of replaced Grimes the next year, or was brought in to kind of help replace Grimes the next year once he went to the pros, um, Kyler Edwards spent a long time on the G League affiliate for Detroit. He actually is now on Brooklyn's G League affiliate, so never mind. But um, they had Ladiki as a big guard, a smart guard, but a passing guy that brought intensity on defense and found his teammates uh, did a great job of passing ball round, right? Um, Good distributor of basketball, right? Looks like to me, well, I would argue that Cade Cunningham is a better shooter than Ladigi by leaps and bounds. Uh, 
I don't think that's arguable even. Um, Cade Cunningham is a six foot seven guard. They just drafted Asar Thompson, a six foot seven guard. Both big, smart passers. And I think it's fair to ask if the folks in Detroit saw when Sasser was at his best as a young player. Uh, they saw an opportunity to bring in Quentin Grimes and what made Quentin Grimes at his best, playing with big, strong, smart passing point guards. And frankly, they've got a couple of options. They've got a lot invested in there in Detroit that can do that. So is that a Sar Thompson? Is that Cade Cunningham that fills the NBA level role of Ladiki? You know, and do you have the same kind of you know magic in a bottle thing to make it to a deeper run to frankly for Detroit just win some basketball games um and kind of show off what these guys can do. I felt bad for Marcus all year because he's continued to find ways to score. He is he is an NBA level scorer. And you and I both know he can defend guards. Um unfortunately the ways he impacts winning have not been on full display because Detroit hadn't really been about winning for a while. And they're still very much as a program and as a franchise learning how to win. So Marcus hadn't gotten to show that off in the same kind of way as a learning that. And I would argue they hadn't learned a lot about it. Marcus probably doing a lot of the teaching as one of the, you know, I know he's a rookie, but he's not a young rookie. Like some of these 19 year old kids, but if you find the way these pieces fit together, because Quinn Grimes has been about winning. I mean, New York has had some of the most successful seasons they've ever had, certainly in my lifetime, and certainly since Patrick Ewing. Um, some of the most success they've had since Ewing with him on the roster. Not an accident. Tibbs has a winning culture and won a title or anything, but like they win a lot of regular season games with Tibbs wherever he goes bringing that in with Quentin as well. Quentin brings the Houston DNA with him. Before that, the Kansas DNA. He brings the different things with him. And I wonder if all that's somewhat intentional. I really think the main thing for me is I want to see them go through the handshake line and see some Quentin Grimes, Marcus Sasser daps. I want to see those guys celebrate together. I want to see those guys smiling, having a good time together because it's hard to smile when your butt beat like Detroit has been. But I think those two are going to find ways to do it and i hope they can get that kind of thing turned around while they do now if you think i'm crazy think i'm silly think i have nothing no idea about what's happening in detroit tell me in the comments down below totally okay i remember to tune in each and every day locked on kooks is a proud matter of locked on pockets remember, it's your team our kooks our houston cougars kind of also our detroit pistons every single day go kooks